So this is the first of three videos where I'm going to be covering some of the very basics in navigating the Blender 2.8 interface. And this is really created with the intention to help absolutely anybody follow along with the remainder of the playlist where we'll be creating some simple game ready assets for any 3D game engine of your choice. But we're also going to be covering some of the nuances when you're modeling and uh, looking at a lot of shortcuts as well. So this might be something, even if you're slightly familiar with Blender, it might be worth following along with these very short videos just to make sure that you're not missing out on anything that we're talking about in the playlist and that you'll understand what I'm referring to when we're using shortcuts and when I mention certain techniques. So let's get started with this one. This, as the title suggests, will be about creating objects and affecting the transforms. So if we look first of all at the two main ways that we can add an object into the world, the slightly slower way is to use the add option up here. And we can see that we then get a drop down of the meshes and the types of meshes that we can create. Now we've got other things as well, things like the armatures, text and things like that. Now armatures and stuff won't be needed until we look more into animation, which we'll do slightly later in the playlist. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna stick with the very basic meshes. So if we select a cube, for instance, just start with a nice standard cube, that is how we very simply add an object into the world. If we press X, we can get rid of this. And the slightly faster way to do this, once you get used to the shortcuts, is to press Shift and A, and you'll get the same option menu come up here, we get the Add menu, and then again, we can just add the same cube back in. So this is what I'll be doing a lot. If you just see objects appearing out of kind of thin air, that's because I've used the Shift and A, and we're adding objects this way. And what I would recommend with all of these, if I ever mention a shortcut that you're not very familiar with, or that you've not heard of before at all, maybe just pause the video and create several objects, move them around, just to get used to the muscle memory of using that shortcut because when you get used to shortcuts in an application like Blender or really any 3D modeling software that's when you're going to become a faster and hopefully better modeler and it's really going to improve and speed up your workflow. So with the cube selected though you'll know that you have the object selected if you have the outline around it you can just left click to get this. We want to go over to the right hand menu here now if yours is closed then you're just going to have this arrow so you can pop the menu back open with the arrow. You can also toggle this with the N shortcut key. So again, this is another one which is very useful to know uh, because if we close this down, we get a little bit more real estate when we're modeling. So this is gonna give us a slightly better modeling window, but there are some details here that you're gonna need from time to time. So it's very handy to know how to quickly pop this back open. So with the side menu open, we want to go to the item tab, and this is gonna give us the information about the object that we have on screen. Specifically, this is going to be the transform information that I've talked about. And this is just comprised of the location, rotation, and the scale. Uh, and all of this kind of builds into the dimensions as well that we have at the bottom. So we're gonna look at how we can modify these specific elements of the transform. And again, we're gonna do this the slower way using this menu over here. And also we're gonna look at the shortcuts. So one thing to make a note of at this point is that we're in object mode, as we can tell up here in the left hand corner. This is gonna be relevant in a few moments, so do keep that in mind. You can quickly toggle to edit mode by pressing the tab shortcut key, uh, or you can use this drop down to choose between the different modes you have available. Now, if you've watched my previous videos as well, you'll know how I've set the Blender interface up. I actually have my pie menu selected so that I can hold tab and select from any of the different modes. So again, that saves me going over here if I want something which isn't the default object or edit mode. If you want to find out how to do that, then go back to the previous videos and I'll give you a full rundown of how I have my Blender set up. Inside of object mode though, if we go over here, the first thing we're gonna do is move the object around. So if we press the move tool, we can grab the center object so we can move this in any axis based on the way that you, the camera is facing, uh, or we can select the individual arrows to move it along that specific axis. If you're moving things this way and you wanted to move things back to where they were, you'd have to go to the location option over here and we can zero this back out to put it back where it was where we started. Now the shortcut for this, if we go back to our select box option, this is going to allow us to just drag and select anything in the scene. And it also means that we have full access to all of the shortcuts here as well. So if we press G, this is going to be our move tool or our move shortcut, and we can now just drag the object around. Now, the really handy thing about this is if you make a mistake, if you forget to clamp an axis or something, you can right mouse click, and that will cancel the last action that you made and put the cube back exactly where it was. 
Now, the other thing that you can do is if you wanted to move things again, just along one different plane, then we can press G and then say we want to move it along the X axis, we can press X and that will constrain it just to move along this red plane, which is the X axis. Now, the other thing is that you can cancel out a specific axis as well. So say that you wanted the cube to move in every direction apart from the Z axis, we can press G and then shift Z. So shift and the key that you don't want it to move along. And we can see that it now moves just along the horizontal plane. And again, right click will cancel any of those movements that I've made. Now, the reason I said that we're gonna keep note that we're in object mode at the moment is I want to do something that we'll do quite often inside of Blender when we're modeling. And that is going to be starting with the base object and then transforming it, so moving it uh, to affect the pivot point. So this is where things rotate around and scale around is this pivot point in the middle indicated by the orange dot. Now this is quite important because this is also when you transfer this to the game engine, uh, when you drag this into the scene, the pivot point is where the object will try to rest on an existing piece of geometry. So if you're putting, for instance, a crate on a floor and the pivot point is in the middle, then generally in most game engines, I found that the crate will appear nested midway in the floor. Now, so ideally what we want to do is know how to edit the pivot point so that we can use that to our advantage. So let's say that we wanted this to be our crate and obviously we want the pivot point to be at the bottom. If we press G and Z and one, this will move this one unit up in space so that we can see our cursor is still down here, but the origin isn't. So if we start scaling, we're still going to be scaling around this pivot point here. So I'm going to control Z that. The ideal thing to do is we're going to go into edit mode. We're going to press G and Z and we'll move this one unit up. And we can see that because we're in edit mode, the pivot point isn't affected. So it stays down here. And now the interesting thing is if we start scaling this in object mode on the Z axis, for instance, we're now scaling from the pivot point. So we can see that the bottom part of this object isn't being moved and we're scaling up. Now, of course, the other handy thing about this, like I mentioned, is if we were then to drop drag and drop this onto a floor surface in a game engine, uh, then this should rest by default at the pivot point. So this will actually just by default be sitting on the floor. So this is gonna be something to keep in mind. It's very handy to know how to work with pivot points. And we're gonna look at this a little bit more in detail as we go through. Uh, but this was just one example of how just knowing something as simple as moving objects around and the different effects you can get from different modes, how that can affect the object. So that's pretty much all we need to do for movement at the moment. I'm gonna put this back where it was for now uh, so that we can look at the rotation and the scaling quickly. So we've kind of already looked at scaling. If we do that, first of all, uh, I was using the shortcut there, which is S for scale. And the option that we have over here is this one at the bottom, which is scale. We can use the middle widget to scale this on all of the different axes, or similar to moving, we can use just the specific widget arms and that would scale it in the given direction. And the important thing is you've already seen how things like the pivot point can be affected by this. And then finally, we've got the rotation. So if we select the rotation option over here, again, we've got the same widgets where we can have uh, control over a specific axis based on the color of the widget that we're selecting. Or we've got this one around the outside where we can rotate this in any direction based on where the camera's looking. And then finally, if we just drag somewhere in the middle, so where we're not actually touching any of the widgets, then we can just rotate this around in freeform. And similarly, if we go back to the box select, if we press R, we get our rotation shortcut. By default, this is going to rotate based on the direction the camera's facing. But like I've mentioned, we have the shortcut stacking options as well. So if we press R and Z, this is just going to rotate around the Z axis. And again, if we wanted to reset any of these, we can just go over to our rotation options over here in the transform and close that down and reset that back to zero. So that's pretty much the creation and alteration of objects and their transforms. Like I said, we will build upon this a little bit later. There's a few caveats uh, to do with the mode in which you're scaling or transforming an object and also the way that the pivot point can affect things. Um, and we're gonna be using what I mentioned, uh, the pivot point, for instance, where we've set this to be uh, one unit up and the pivot point at the bottom. We're gonna be using this to our benefits a little bit later in the playlist when we're modeling some of the assets. So this kind of thing can be really, really useful to know to speed up the modeling process as well.
So like I mentioned, if there's anything new here, anything you haven't experienced before, do spend a little bit of time just to repeat them on different objects, just to get used to the process of the shortcuts and how they uh, how they work together. Um, and we're going to build up on this a little bit later. For now though, I'll leave this video here. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.